We've got a 330 X drive, it's E92, and it's basically been told in with a lack of power. So I have, I've got absolutely no idea what's wrong with it. It starts, which is good sign, isn't it? Engine lights on. First thing I always look out for on these type of cars is, are these wires rubbing through on the rail pressure sensor? Yes, they were. This isn't the issue though. Tape them up and let's crack on with the next bit of fault finding. There was some suggestion that there was an issue with the DPF, but I checked it and it was less than 100 millibar and that's absolutely spot on. And at this stage, you don't know what's happening because the fault codes, there's quite a few different fault codes and our EGR one, as we're gonna find out, didn't really affect it at first, it was a very intermittent. Quite a lot of fault codes there. Pulled the pipe off the EGR valve, there was no suction, so I disregarded that. But in the fault finding game, most faults usually are intermittent. You never always get them dead easy where they're permanently faulty. Bearing in mind the air mass flow sensor, fault code is there because what's actually happening, 003 FFO, it's picking up that the, there is um, a reduction in air mass because there's too much feed in EGR. I didn't know at this stage that. Uh, as, as I've put there, it was an intermittent fault, but we go on to the roll test and everything should become pretty clear. So what I'm doing there is I'm just putting the EGR solenoid actuating vacuum line back on. As soon as I put it on, it started sucking, I heard it. So let's see, I bet there's no power and I'll explain what it is in a minute. There we are, zero, foot flat down, look, there you are. Look at the live data again. And then, flat as a pancake. Can't drive back like that, so let's pop it back on. Off, I mean. Rock and roll, baby. Rock and roll. And now, miraculously, we'll have power again. So once I was able to get back to the workshop, I could say I had 50% less boost pressure than I should have, and actually 50% less air mass. On the M57 engine, when you have too much EGR, it reduces the air mass on the later N November N57 engines. The EGR will actually increase the air mass. It uses a different strategy and a different measuring technique. And that is the big difference between two generations of engines. You must remember that is very important. So what I was doing on that road test, I was pulling this pipe off here. Because what it does, it pulls full EGR on when the solenoid shorts out, but you can't control the vacuum, it just pulls the vacuum right the way through. Just switch to front camera and show you what I was doing. Obviously driving at the air, we've got no issue because we've got no EGR. But if you just listen, you'll hear it make a noise as it pulls the valve. Full vacuum on there, full vacuum, and that shouldn't be like that. You can hear a click, listen. Yeah, pull vacuum. <laughs> There's your proof. There we are. So that's the issue. And what it does, vacuum goes in the uh, canister there. The vacuum canister. There's a shaft here and it's sealed with a ball shaped seat in. It pulls it open, it allows the EGR to be fed in constantly. That's why there was no boost pressure. <coughs> a lack of boost pressure could be anything, but usually if you've got a problem, with the turbo actuator which is down there, you'll get a fault code because there's a position sensor in there so and the throttle is dead easy. That's the open position, you don't need to take that off, you know if that's 
there, it's, it's open. If it's closed, that'll be the other way. So that's what's wrong with it. So we'll have to take the inlet manifold off and the solenoids right down there. We'll just change it and that'll be it. Here's a little diagram I did for you to show how the system works. You have the engine ECU, an EGR valve and two vacuum lines. Here you have 12 volt permanent life to the solenoid valve. The solenoid valve is switched with a duty cycle signal from the DDE. And that controls the amount of vacuum output. Here we have a vacuum, constant vacuum in to the solenoid valve, the permanent vacuum. And we should have a switched vacuum line on the way out, which will open the EGR valve. On a nine particular vehicle, those vacuum lines were permanently under vacuum, so the output was also under vacuum constantly. And here's the moment you've all been waiting for, bench test. There we are, we're actually on the output side there. There's no vacuum at all, basically. It's just going straight through, pulling no air from the top one. And then we go to the vacuum supply, which is the top one. Do it again, again. That should now, really the vacuum supply should hold a full vacuum, of course. The solenoid would then open and close to bleed the vacuum off to do the work. So it's goosed, simple as that. So, decided to cut this open very carefully with a very small hacksaw, a coping saw. And I found the reason there's a filter, by the way, around the outside, a little filter mesh, because it has to have a fresh air outlet. That's actually what that big pipe is there, you can see. It's got a cap covering that. There's the sauna plunger that goes up and down. That's the bit that's energised with electricity, as we saw in the diagram before. That's the diaphragm, and obviously the diaphragm. Central pin there is the vacuum supply. And then diaphragm oscillates up and down. Diaphragm, as you can see on this particular solenoid, is torn and completely worthless. That is the reason why we have no vacuum being held in that device. And it's always nice to strip them down. I always like doing it. People always say I'm wasting my time, but I like to understand things. And I believe that's one of the reasons why I'm pretty good fault finder. There you are. If you look at the end of it, it's totally goosed.